¿Qué onda raza? Aquí está el angelito El gallito de la sierra A.K.A. Crypto Keeper Aquí el Kirikiriki Trayéndoles un poquito de noticia Regarding cryptocurrencies I hope everyone's doing well Un saludo a toda la raza Nomás quería hablar un poquito de cryptocurrency And I uh, mentioned my last video Talking a little bit about Becoming a wiser investor And what, is, what does it take To become a wiser investor Well It takes, uh, it takes a lot of patience um, and it takes a lot of uh, extra work in terms of feeding your mind with sound doctrine to be able to understand the strategies that millionaires use. <clears throat> Now, what can I recommend to you, perhaps, that I've used in my own life to really help me become that wiser investor or that much wiser as an investor crypto right now is not doing too well right you know you have some tokens that are that haven't been able to perform well in the last couple of months but that's crypto guys and gals that's what it does it's the long-term investor that looks back and says man i'm so glad i made this investment because look at where it's at now <clears throat> and And that's kind of how I feel about the investments I make. I make long-term investments with cryptocurrencies that I know have potential to solve a major issue in the economy or in the world or anywhere. And, um, and so I hope that as you look into your investments, you do it with... Um, with care and you do it with knowledge and you do it with responsibility because there's a lot of people that jump in just sort of a, on a hunch or because someone said so and you know que mi tío y que quien sabe que you know I'm gonna get into it because that person made three four hundred grand or you know four or five grand and that's why I'm gonna jump into it don't jump into it for those reasons Be smart about it. Do your homework. Do your reading. Do your research. And make that decision on your own. Whether or not cryptocurrency is for you. And it's fine. If it's not for you, then it's not for you. It's all good. But you'll be amazed the statistics around how many people are in cryptocurrency versus those that are not. My apologies about the, uh, the video. Um... You'll be amazed. It's like, you know, if you're in cryptocurrency, you're considered to be like just even in America, you know, like even I think it's much less like geographically if it was broken down to like states and much more or less if it's ge geographically broken down to like specific uh, counties like I live in a county that I think probably less than 50 percent of the population are in cryptocurrency like. There's uh, 650,000 in population in the county that I live. And I could tell you that about 52% of that is Caucasian. And let's say like another, um, sorry, less than 50% is Caucasian. And about, uh, you know, about close to 50% are Hispanic. And like 2%, you know, it's every, all others. And if, if we were to really measure how many people of that population, so you're talking over 300,000 people, Latinos, Mexicanos, people of color, um, different ethnicities and races within the Mexican, Latin, indigenous population. And of that amount, I would say probably like, 5% are in cryptocurrency. So it's relatively a very small number of people that are in crypto that are invested in cryptocurrency or maybe have very little knowledge about cryptocurrency. But what what strategies can you use? You know, what can you do to have a change of mind? Because that's really what it is. It's having a change of mind in terms of what you do know and what you don't know. Crypto's new. It's relatively new. So people 
when they hear cryptocurrency, they're kind of like, oh, I don't know if it's for me, chalice, you know, I'm not going to throw my money in there, I'll, I'll, I'll be taking straight to the cleaners, right? Well, yeah, there's a lot of mis misconceptions and there's perceptions. And so what can you do to change your thinking? Well, let's start here. There's a couple of good books that I've been reading for years and years and years. And I, I've mentioned this, man. I'm a reader. You know, let me tell you something. Great leaders, behind a great leader is a good woman, but also, or a good man. But behind a great leader is a wall full of books. A great leader is a reader, okay? Two of my favorite books, I have a lot of favorite books, but two of the books that I read a lot over and over and over, and I, I always learn something new. So let me tell you something, that if, if you read a book one time and you've closed the cover on that and you've put it away and all you did is read it, that ain't going to do nothing for you. It's going to maybe spark an interest or it's going to strike a chord in your in, in yourself. And it potentially might move you a little bit. It'll create a little bit of maybe motivation or inspiration. But reading a book from front to back and then closing it and putting it, putting it away on your shelf, on inside a drawer or throwing it in some box... It ain't gonna. It's. Just, it ain't gonna do nothing major for you until you start to read the book again and again and again, and then you start to tease out some some of the learning objectives from the book and applying them into your own life. That is going to have major, major. Um, changes and benefits to your life. So here's one book, As a Man Thinketh by James Allen. Or consider this other book, The Magic of Thinking, uh, The Magic of Thinking Big by David Schwartz. Okay, those two books, two of my favorite. I read a lot of John Maxwell books. I read a lot of, a, a lot of other types of leadership books, but, um, but those two books are great because they touch on a lot of interesting philosophies. And it's really, you got to ask yourself, what is your philosophy? You know, how much do you put into thinking? You know, here's, here's a strategy that I think most people don't do. I can guarantee you that there's a lot of people don't do this. And if you want your brain to rewire itself and become a thinker like Albert Einstein. When, when we think of mathematics, we think of Albert Einstein and the theory of relativity. And I'm not a, like a math guru or mathematician, but because I read a lot, I'm very familiar with Albert Einstein's work. I'm very familiar with Mr. Albert Einstein's um, upbringing, his challenges, and things he did. You know, I don't know if you knew, but Albert Einstein uh, shared in his biography and in interviews and people that just met the man and wrote about the man, he had shared that he had a dyslexia, that it was very difficult for him to memorize certain directions or arrive to certain locations. And even when he would take the train to his his uh, his office, you know, he, he 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 taught, so he worked, and in the places that he worked, he had to specifically write all the details in a in a in a uh, in a chronological order how to get to the place he was going from point A, and then how to get back to go uh, from point A back to point B, and back to point C, and back and back to point A. In other words. He had to write all those details, otherwise he'd get lost. Amazing. You know, and some of us don't have to do that, right? But but there was a reason why he did that. It wasn't so much because of the dyslexia. It was because he spent very little energy cluttering his mind with things that he felt were, were non-productive for him. Meaning, why try to memorize how to get to work 
uh, taking a train, where to jump on the train, what time to jump on the train, you know, how, how many stops the train has to go through before you get off, when to get off, where to turn, where to go, where to walk. He, he was so brilliant that he basically came with the, came up with a habit and a device and a mechanism to not have to memorize those things so that he can free up his mind for other more important things like solving complex equations and formulas. So, you know, kudos to him, man. Here's something I took from that learning. I was born wired a certain way. When you're born, there are some some subconscious level things and thinking that take place in your life, in your hard wiring, that you don't have to put a whole lot of thought into. Let's take, for example, your writing with what hand you use to write. Now, I'm a left-handed writer. I wasn't, I didn't have to receive training from any teacher or my own parents to learn how to write with my left hand. I was wired that way. And it's unfortunate, you know, and here, and this, I'm just going to make a sidebar comment. When my jefito was young and when he was in school, my, my dad, my pops was born in 1940. When my pops was born, and if he was to attend school in America, in America, writing with your left hand was frowned upon. They would force you to change the way you wrote and write with your right hand. But it didn't matter how much they forced you because even though you learned how to write with your right hand, you were wired to write with your left hand. So you'll never forget how to write with your left hand. And in fact, when you pick up a pencil or a pen and you write, you feel more comfortable and it, be, and, it, and it comes very easy to you to write with the hand that you are hardwired to write with. Okay, so I told myself, well, you know, back then they used to force the lefties to write with the right hand and perhaps as much, of, as, much as that was probably oppressive behavior to those who were left-handed, Maybe it did something really good for those people who were forced to write with the right hand. Because here's what I've learned. I I actually was not forced to write with my right hand. And I began to write with my right hand. For many different reasons. But the main reason was, what will happen to my brain if I write with my right hand and I train myself to write with my right hand? What What will come out of that? And I started to monitor that. So in my in my daily writing, in my diary, I began to write with my right hand. And I began to also take notes on some of those changes. At first, I found it very difficult. But what I found was the learning curve was very, very, um, very slow. So when I wrote with my right hand, I began to take my time to write clearly, to think more with my with my brain on what I was writing about. And I needed to have very little distraction because I had to put a, a lot of effort in thinking of how to write clearly, how to write completely in complete sentences and having clarity because when you write a lot of times, we make a lot of mistakes when you write because subconsciously you don't have to really focus your brain is thinking faster of what you want to say and, it, and your hand is following. So just consider that for a moment. Consider all of the mechanics that go on from thinking to writing to actually writing it to conveying the message and finalizing your writing, right? I mean, it, it's amazing. It's amazing how many mechanics work all together from thought to mind to to idea, to put it on paper, to writing it, to remembering how to spell correctly, grammar, punctuation, and all of that that is considered when you write. Now, I only share this example because it's all about changing the way you think. And in, when I began to write with my right hand, it changed the mechanics and it changed the process of thinking for me. And I was able to draw from that, from those experiences. And as a result, I felt 
that I can think at a higher level. So thinking became something of practice for me. Just as very much as thinking is to training any other muscle. Thinking is a process of training your mind like a muscle to become stronger. I hope that makes sense to you. So it's no different than working out and doing curls to like work out your bicep muscle. Your thinking muscle also needs to work out. Also, it's no different than the thinking muscle and you train on thinking as you tra- would train on becoming a great listener. So those are, those are a few of the examples that I began to focus on so that I become a better thinker, a brighter thinker, and that I could use my thinking to make very educative decisions. So when I began to contemplate about whether or not I would get into crypto, I began to think. And I began to, to, to think at a more macro level. Macro in the sense of global scale, not local, not, you know, again, going back to geographics, I was not thinking about the impact that cryptocurrency will have here locally where I live. I wasn't thinking about that. Now, great, you know, like like somebody who was thinking local and lives in Miami, they're, they're ahead of the game because Miami has its own its own city coin so we don't have that here in the city of where i live in the city of where i live they're not the majority of the people in government the majority of the people in civic duty the majority of people in public and private sectors are not thinking like the city of miami in all honesty, I feel like it's a lack, well, it's more ignorance than it has to do with with knowledge, because I'm not saying that in the city that I work, that I live in, there aren't knowledgeable people. I'm sure there are, and I'm sure there's educated people, but there's people that are just ignorant to cryptocurrency. And so I started thinking macro. I started thinking global. I started thinking, okay, cryptocurrency is it going to solve and what is it going to solve globally and you're seeing already so much action which is why some of these cryptocurrencies when they first launched they were pennies now they are some are thousands of dollars others are hundreds of dollars and others are tens of dollars right 10 20 30 50 but they all started at a very low price and the reason why cryptocurrency is going to um, be a gigantic economic powerhouse is because it cryptocurrency is not micro cryptocurrency is macro it's it's to solve the financial global economic freedom for all people and that that's what got me attracted to it and that's why I got into it but the thing is is that unless you think that way unless you're able to really think at the scale of how some of the cryptocurrency creators those folks that are thinking like way far out Um, unless you can think like they think, then you're pretty much not going to, not going to convince yourself to become a cryptocurrency investor. And so I feel that it has a lot to do with the thinking level, the thinking that you put into it or the thinking that you have with regard to cryptocurrency. So that's just one basic strategy that I wanted to cover today that I think would help you become a wiser investor and so that's all that's all i have for you today again as a man thinketh by james allen or even the other book that i recommend strongly is the magic of thinking big 
by David Schwartz. Those two books. Here's another book that I really love. I'm just going to throw this in as a little token. The Richest Man in Babylon. Check that book out, man. I've been reading that book for a long time. The Richest Man in Babylon. Give it a shot. It's a, it's a very simple... Well, it's not a very simple read in terms of understanding what the message is, what the what the um, the premise of the book aims to to educate. But the book is strong, man. The book is really good, and I think uh, I I think as an investor, someone who's looking to become an investor needs to. Every investor needs to read that book, and I and I and I want to say that almost every author of a good investment or economic book, uh, econo- a book on economics has read that book. So again, I hope you find this video helpful. I know I didn't touch on a lot of crypto, but you know, here and there I'll touch on strategies and here and there I'll, I'll kind of share with you what I'm doing, how I'm doing it. And I'll close by just saying this. I have not bought any new I have not bought any, any coins uh, with with regard to the coins that I already own because I'm waiting for the launch of a few other um, DEXs that are coming out on Cardano Ada, and those are soon to launch by the end of October, maybe early December, uh, sorry, November or December. And I'm, I'm, I'm saving my money to jump in those. I've mentioned those before. Mel... Meld is not going to be one that I think we're going to be able to buy, purchase, or get involved with. Uh, they're trying to um, they're trying to go through all of the approval processes for U.S. citizens to get on Meld. But Meld is one of my favorites. Sunday Swap is another one of my favorites. The 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 DJ, uh, I think that's how you pronounce it. I don't know how you really pronounce it, but that's the Cardano coin that Cody. Uh, Cotti or Cody, C O T I is working on, but the ones that I'm heavy, heavily invested in right now are Cardano, Polymatic. Um, I'm invested in uh, Amp Token. I have a lot of Litecoin. I have um, uh, I have a few others, and uh, I'll bring you guys an update next video. Well, thank you so much. I tamos. Take care. I hope you find the books helpful. Uh, and uh, shoot me a comment. Let me know. Let me know what what you want to hear more about. Uh, other books that I've read. How those books have helped me in my life and my success. Not only personally, professionally. Um, and so I'm happy to share. Thank you.